loose puck is grabbed by Clark. Clark turning to the corner. He's bumped in back of the net. Here's Gardner out front. And now Alec Gardner again. Alec Oda skated and Gardner took a whack at it. And McLean will hang on to it. A lot of pushing and shoving in front of the net finder. As Wendell Clark is caught roughing in front of the net. Well, it's a glove on punch off the nose of Lafayette. No question about it. Lafayette goes down. Long lead pass was onside. Cordell was up there at center ice. Now he and Rouse. It gets the high sticking call, and this is a great opportunity for Leafs to get that all important first goal. Here it is right here in front of the net. You can see he came across with the stick right across the helmet of Eastwood. It was Hunter who took the puck and skated away from that scrum. But as you saw on that replay, it was Glenn who had the stick up. They killed off a huge power play. No score in this game. And the Canucks, Trevor Linden, taken to the Foray. Foray speeding in. Gardner shoots it from there. Tapped down by Babbage. He dropped it back. Canucks pass it crisply up across center. Gardner intercepted the first pass. McIntyre overstated it, and here's a penalty being called against Toronto. Brown might test him again. Low shot. It swept up the net, hit a stick, and bounced to the corner, and now Lume getting set. The pass goes in, intercepted, Brown! Big save by Putman! Got that right pad out somehow. That one was going in. Brown with Bure, another shot. Take it and score! Cortnell racing to center ice. Going in over the leaf line as Cortnell, he made the move, though. And that put Bure outside. Rouse went flying into the boards. It's shot back of the net to Beret, and Lefebvre has him, but he shakes it off. Beret into the far corner, and Osborne can't stop him. Here's Beret all the way to the line, and Osborne rides him down to the boards. And Beret slow to get up. Boy, he's a piece of work, number 10 for Vancouver. Fast, but tough, too. Five minutes left to the second. Two players on the ice. The puck jam there. They get a whistle. Gilmore is on top of everybody, pushing and shoving. There's Adams, number eight, trying to get back up. Six-two are the shots here in the second in favor of the Canucks. Well, Pavel Burry always keeps his feet moving, turning, twisting, feet moving all the time. So if you only get a bit of them, that isn't enough as he walks around for about 12 seconds before finally Osborne shuts him down in the leaf zone. Here's Pearson after it. Bartnell had him covered. Brown into the corner, lost. Kushelinski right in front. The Leafs jab away at him, McLean coming up big. The whistle goes, the puck came loose. Only nine seconds left in the period. And the clock will run out here as Gilmore played it into McCown. His shot was on. McLean, the easy save. And the horn goes to end the second period. With once again the players milling together to the right of Kirk McLean over on the boards, and the officials are in to calm them if they can. Well, the two glaring problems for the Leafs, and you have to give the Canucks credit for creating them. One, they don't seem to get a second chance very often against McLean. And two, they have real trouble controlling the puck in the offensive zone against this big Vancouver team. That wasn't a problem for Toronto in rounds one and two. It certainly is in round three. Shots in the period by Vancouver 11 and by Toronto 8. Well, this hasn't been as brutally rough game as uh, one and two, but you can see there is some animosity that flares up from time to time. Getting close to the bench without his helmet. And Ojek and Berg are testing each other's courage along the boards. Berg's trying to take, or did it, uh, Ojek's trying to take Berg's sweater off. A rush started by Clark. Coming up himself. Trying to center it, Todd Gill is in there, back to the line, here's Ella driving it, and that's blocked by Craven. He has had a strong game. This is Bure, alone, score! Here on the Maple Leaf 
Bruins with 3.35 left in the third. So they're singing their songs in Vancouver now. As the Canucks have opened up that three-goal spread and Pop Van loves one down for Rouse. Around the net, he's starting out. Rouse to Krusheleski. The Canucks will try to bar the door for good now on this one. It is centered off the back of the net. swinging and uh, this gets ugly right here they're all trying to go at it the big pile up back to the net it started on the hit on Gilmore and Pearson took off after Hunter and he has hit him times now. Hunter hasn't even got his gloves off or hasn't dropped his stick. This was one of those one-man fights with Pearson. He ought to get a couple of weeks for this. Pearson, who's been in the doghouse of Pat Burns, hasn't played for quite some time. Was dressed tonight for the first time. And he jumped Hunter. And you know, Tim Hunter Gilmore was hit hard back of the net and immediately it exploded. Hard hit by Hunter and here comes Pearson. Well Gilmore's been hit more in this series than he has in the first two rounds combined and Hunter is uh, Pearson's coming to the rescue of Gilmore who was really decked. Wait a by minute. Running and Gilmore might go. Romesso took a swing at Gilmore. Oh, brother, this one's not done yet. 3-10 left in the third. And the officials, well, they have a player each. So that's three, and everybody else is going. Burry included at center ice with Krushelniski. Well, Ronning and Gilmore got the yapping at each other, and the next thing you know, this developed. The, the Toronto bench is saying that Hunter came off the bench after he went to the bench after the Pearson incident. So this has turned into an ugly scene with only 3.10 left to go. Brown and Rouse at center ice are alone, and Rouse's shirt is now off, and I, I'm pretty sure we're going to go. Now they get arm's length, and there goes Rouse. Hunter's not finished yet. Andy Van Helleman and Hunter have squared off. And he's uh, telling uh, without too much in the way of uh, words and a lot of animation, also sent to the bench. Neither one of them sent to the penalty box. You can get to the benches. The well, dress moves directly from the right bench. But this time remaining in the game, I'm sure they were gone to their dressing rooms anyway, Harry. So no penalty box. And then of course if they kept looking for somebody to square off with. And there are gloves and sticks all over the ice now. Andy Van Helman, Jerry Gauthier. And uh, DePuzo have things, I think, quieted. And Van Helleman is saying, everybody leave, I believe. I think that's what he's saying with 310 remaining. He wants to silence a few things if he can. To the media area. Boxing club out there. I don't know if anybody wanted Van that. Van Helleman got cut, too, in this whole thing. He's sending both teams to their dressing room yes. until he decides who gets what penalty. I'm sure quite a few players are going to be thrown out of the game anyway. There's a the instigator rule, of course, was the first one that will dictate that Andy Van Helleman will send somebody off. That was Pearson. Third man in. That was uh, uh, several. And they all went going for somebody. And there's a bit of uh, debris thrown under the ice anyway, so it's going to take some time to get that cleaned up. And I think this is a pretty good choice by Andy Van Helleman. He immediately came over to the benches uh, when the three officials, dog tired, uh, had everybody separated, they thought. But there's no way to control other fights that were breaking out. There were one or two others that were going. 
So now he has sent the teams to their respective rooms until uh, things subside here in the third period. And uh, we'll get the penalty announcements. And there will be a few of them. The trainers have been instructed to go out and get their respective sticks and gloves. So Van Helleman is going to get rid of the players here while he talks it over with the two linesmen and perhaps the supervisor, Wally Harrison, watched all this from the press box before deciding how he's going to handle this situation. Pearson, without question, was the guy that started it. And after it looked like it was calmed down and Hunter and Pearson were told to get out of here, it flared up again. I thought it was, uh, and it is, it was Ronning and, and uh, Gilmore, and then Mamesso roared in to the rescue of Ronning, and then we have Rouse and everybody else involved. Andy Van Helleman right here gets hit, but it accidentally by Tim Hunter. Van Helleman shows he can handle himself too. He's telling Hunter to get out of there. I'm sure he says, Tim, I told you to go to the room the first time. Boy, a hot time for Andy Van Helleman. You can see his cut. The right side of his nose has been cut. The two captains are the only hockey players that we see now. Trevor Linden of Vancouver and Wendell Clark of the Maple Leafs. And Van Helleman has a uh, night's work now ahead of him to uh, meet out these penalties. There will be quite a few. And the two teams have gone to their respective rooms. There goes Linden and there goes Clark. 3-10 remaining in the third period. The Canucks have the game in the bag. They are leading three to nothing, and they'll take a lead in the series. Quite likely will after this one. Coming here, 1-1 in the series, and the Canucks with a, a good lead here with 3-10 left, 3 nothing. Let's go to Ron McLean. Okay, Bob, just to let you know, Andy has sent the teams to the room uh, because he felt the fans would just continue to litter the ice with the Toronto Maple Leafs milling in and about around the area. So he's going to clear the ice to try and get the fans to withdraw from throwing anything. And then they'll be called back to uh, complete the final three minutes and ten seconds. We'll try to get a word from Andy. You can see he's getting attention with uh, Pat Tapuzo and Gerard Gauthier to try and sort this out. And Kerry Fraser is in the ref's room. Maybe I'll sneak back in there and try to get a word with uh, the backup official tonight to see what if anything he knows. But that's the story why they're in the room is to avoid littering the ice. Thanks Ron. And like we said a good move by the referee because it would have taken some time to clean it up anyway and with all those players standing around in the mood as it was uh, wasn't a very there's the commissioner of the of the league is here watching everything Mr. Bettman Arthur Griffiths and his wife Arthur in the foreground Mr. Bettman thought that only in the NBA did this happen as they've had many more of these type scenes than the National Hockey League has had this year. Well, I'm sure he uh, isn't as uh, too happy about this as the man in charge of the league. Here's another look at Andy Van Helm. You see, he's not cut now. He gets cut trying to contain Tim Hunter. And I think right there, he got Hunter's helmet in the face. So, uh, Van Helm. Full marks. Yet. Full marks to Andy. Stayed with it. He handled one of the toughest guys in the league, Tim Hunter. I think Tim, Tim Hunter saw who he was tangling with and decided to get out of there and not have any more problems heaped upon him. Well, Van Helleman is not in sight, so obviously he has gone for repairs. While the two linesman, DeFuso, is he over there? Can't see him. Yeah, he's sitting and, down. And They're getting a little okay. first aid at the timer's bench. So this game, I thought, was a lot less violent. Uh, and mean than games one and two, but with 310 to go, that changed dramatically. As you stand by, here are the penalties. Number 12, Rob Pearson, five minutes for fighting and a game yes. misconduct. Pearson, five in a game. To number three, Bob Rouse, five minutes for fighting and a game misconduct. That was the fight at center ice. To number 93, Doug Gilmore. Two minutes for roughing, a 10 minute misconduct. All right, so. He will have handed out some more misconducts, I'm sure. More to come. The penalties are sent to the Vancouver Canucks. To number 22, Jeff Brown. 
Five minutes for fighting and a game misconduct. That was the fight with refs. To number 27, Sergio Molesso. Two minutes for roughing and a game misconduct. He was the third man in on another number fight. number three, Brett Hedekin. Two minutes for roughing. The penalties at 16.50 of the third period. All right, 16.50, the time of the penalties. So not Andy. that many gone. No, I don't know why Andy didn't give everybody out there 10 minutes. And then make sure you had no animosity between the players that, that were involved with each other at all in that scene. So let's hope they've calmed down as this one winds down. 2.55 remaining in the third. Canucks are in there again, and Eastwood comes back to pick it up. Eastwood out against McIntyre. He tried to hit Clark with the pass, but he had to back up for it. Now Clark is checked. A little pushing and shoving there, and a right hand thrown by Clark on McIntyre. McIntyre checked Clark. Some pushing and shoving, and then Clark got the right hand up and let her fly at McIntyre. I don't think McIntyre's going to get anything on this one. The actions of men are best in, are their best interpreters of their thoughts. And McIntyre's thought was not to get involved. So Clark will get two at least for roughing. There it is. Tanya Harding would be proud of with that big heavy goal stick. Forty three seconds remaining in the third. Now now. Canucks three. Leafs no score. Well the Canucks and here's a look at what Potvin was looking at. He couldn't see by the Vancouver player so he wrapped him with a stick. Van Helleman saw it and made the foul. 30 seconds left. Canucks keep it in. Back to the line. Dinnick might get another chance. Gives it to Babbage. Winds up. Shoots it. Everybody's talking about that dust up with about three minutes left in the hockey game, all brought about by that big hit by Tim Hunter on Gilmore. It was a clean hit. The uh, referee called it a clean hit and told me to go to the bench. Um, you know, and they continued on, and, and we had to even the, even the situation up. And Brownie was had two guys on him, so and then uh, Andy made his calls, and that was it. You figure the Leafs uh, just uh, trying to uh, send a message for Game Four. Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, they're probably frustrated. They're down three nothing. Uh, you know, that's uh, that's all I know. That you know, I can't put words in their mouth. He shouldn't have been penalized. It was a clean hit. Uh, like I say, I think they were just trying to stir something up for next game. And uh, like the the pattern was clear in the San Jose thing. They went they went after them uh, when the score was out of whack one way or another. And uh, not going to say anything about the Hunter shot at the end of the game? Hunter always picked a spot his whole career. So he hasn't changed a bit, so that's it. I just think that, uh, you know, maybe the shot, uh, you know, was a little unexpected. I don't think, uh, you know, Cliff Ronning had his man behind the net, which was Dougie, and uh, I think Hunt, Hunter went out of his way to, to make a big hit. And, uh, you know, it's a 3 nothing game, and I just didn't think uh, as a team we needed our best player to be getting hit like that. Uh, he could have been out for the series if he landed the wrong way or, or something like that, so... Hopefully we can carry this emotion into, into game four and uh, turn things around. Gilmore was playing the puck. Hunter came in and left his feet to just blast Gilmore. Yeah, it's a clean hit. And he called it in the last announced. It's still a clean hit. Uh, nothing's changed uh, from our game. It's a hitting game. Uh, that's the bottom line. We're playing hard right to the end, and we found a way to win tonight, and we're happy with it. Hunter always picked a spot his whole career, so he hasn't changed a bit, so that's it. You know, I find it funny that uh, Hunter comes all the way down from his point man and go all the way down, leave his feet to hit, happens to be 93. 
Uh, we're not going to let Doug Gilmore get hit like that. No, there's no way about it, and that's what I find a little bit odd. It's, it's part of it when they're going to when they're going to do things like that to, to Doug Gilmore. Uh, they've got to expect that, and I don't think they're surprising by it. You know, I don't think Tim Hunter didn't expect to have Rob Pearson come at him when when he does that to Doug Gilmore. We're down by three goals. We're just letting them know we're not finished the series. You only have to win four games to win a series, not two.